Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another broadcast, Faith Baptist Church. Faith Baptist Church located 205 East Main Street in Ligoti. And uh, we're just uh, welcoming you. Uh, I look so forward to these midweek uh, Bible studies. Uh, I don't know about you, but by this point in the week, Sunday, last Sunday's uh, far in the rearview mirror, and, and this coming Sunday, it's still a little ways out there. And, and so that's the time we usually meet uh, as a corporate body, and everybody encourages one another. But by now, you've been encouraging yourself, and sometimes that gets difficult as life caves in, doesn't it? So uh, I hope this will be encouraging for you uh, this evening. As many of you know, our last exposition was a couple weeks ago. We did the Ten Commandments series. And uh, I'm going to uh, bring an individual study once again tonight, uh, getting closer to uh, a subject that we'll study for several Wednesdays, but not quite there yet. I'm still praying for directions. So find 1 Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10, and we're going to read verse 31. And we're going to speak about living for God's glory. Living for God's glory. 1 Corinthians 10.31 tells us all of life is to be lived for God's glory. And so let's read in verse 31. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. I'm going to read that again. Uh, what, where you, whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, the, the question there in 1 Corinthians 10 was, uh, that there was a great argument going on amongst the Christians. Uh, the uh, Jewish culture uh, sacrificed animals, and uh, they were taking these sacrificed animals, and after they had completed the sacrifice, some meat was left. They were selling open market. Now, I don't know about you, but you, you, you open that uh, sales flyer and, and there's a bargain. You can imagine that uh, that meat had been given to the temple and the priests had, so they didn't have much overhead. So they probably undercutted the price of, of the local market. So most families are always looking for a way to save a little money and, to feed everyone, and so people were buying some food that had been sacrificed to idols, and it was completely flipping some people up, and there was a great argument, uh, some saying that it's all right to eat it because we're not under the law, and others uh, just losing their mind, uh, so they went back and forth, back and forth, and uh, I don't think, that's not a subject, we don't sacrifice animals in America, and we don't uh, have uh, cut rate sales on sacrificed animal meat. But uh, there's other issues that the church uh, circles its wagons and argues over. And what Paul was telling them after he went on, uh, matter of fact, uh, if you go up to verse 23, he said, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man's another's wealth. So, boy, this is saying a lot. Uh, in America, and, and I'm a proud American, I'm a I'm patriotic proud American. Still chokes me up when I'm something national anthem. Still, uh, uh, still throw my heart into event prayers and all those type of things. Uh, but uh, when... when we as Christians, we can't be independent and say, well, I don't care what you think. You know, we've got to, uh, got to prayerfully approach things, but what we do, the general uh, theme of thing, all of our life actions should be lived for God's glory, as we said. Uh, the phrase glory to God actually means to honor God. So whatever you're doing, uh, whether it's eating, drinking, uh, fishing, hunting, working, uh, living in family environment, whatever you do, uh, do it to bring glory to God, the Bible says. And, uh, you know, we must uh, acknowledge Him as our Creator and our Redeemer. 
He created us. The Bible says that in Psalms that, that He created us in our mother's womb. You know, before our father and mother even knew we existed, we had already been created. We had already been given our hair color, and we would already been given our stature, already been given our sex, everything. Uh, God had created and he placed it uh, in his mother's womb. Uh, you know, there, there's an old southern gospel song uh, to, uh, that uh, I'm not quite sure who wrote it or who's famous for singing it, but you hear it once in a while. And there's a line in it that I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Oh man, that, that grabs you, don't it? You can't. You can't get through this life without God's assistance. And so uh, the rule uh, of, of living in God's glory is universal and extends to all our actions, uh, every action we have. Uh, we should honor God for uh, life's mercies, uh, including food and drink. Can you imagine the volume of food and water to uh, sustain uh, seven and a half, soon approaching eight billion people. I, is that remarkable? And yet, uh, I get it, I get it, and there's somebody saying, well, there's some people starving. Yes, there that, that probably are, and, and that's unfortunate. But really, it's not a food issue, it's a distribution issue. Uh, here in America, as many of you know, uh, it's been years ago, uh, talked to a missionary uh, from a, a country that was very impoverished and he had came back to America and, and, and he had spent some time, he was an American missionary and uh, he was telling me that uh, he had forgotten how much Americans throw what. Have you ever went to a buffet and you know everybody's plate's full and all of a sudden someone decides ah, I can't eat anymore and they push a three-quarter eaten plate off to the side. And we all, we're all aware of that. Now, I'm not criticizing. Not, uh, that's not my subject, that you should eat all your food. Uh, but the subject is that God provides so well for our world. Birds eat, cattle eat, horses. You think, uh, we talk about the almost 8 billion humans. Think of all the millions and millions of, of animals, uh, you know, we've got insects, worms, we've got all this stuff. And everything on the planet is sustained by God's mercy and grace. Yeah, are there some starvations? Of course. But uh, it's unfortunate. It isn't that God hasn't provided enough, uh, some means not to get it there. Uh, with a thankful heart, we should give him our best. Be, be thankful. I don't know about you, but uh, that's convicting. Usually I, I go, uh, Sheila will uh, ask me what I want for supper and, and uh, we'll, we'll go back and forth and we'll find a term and something that sounds good to us. And usually I'll go down the freezer and, and I'll go through this uh, section to get to this section and over here some, uh, some type of meat and over here some type of vegetable, maybe a casserole. But, but that, that's, that's in the freezer waiting to be eaten. And then if I get up in the cabinet, there's canned goods. If I get on the shelf, there's canned goods. You see where I'm going with this? And I imagine most families that I'm speaking to, now you may not, uh, one of us may have more uh, surplus food than the other, but I imagine all of us have something. And, uh, and that's God, God's grace. We should be thankful. Uh, you know, what a change in, in, in our actions if we would just become more thankful, right? So maybe somebody there is saying, you know, I've tried this living to God's glory and I always get tripped over myself. Well, can I tell you something? I do too. Uh, but turn to Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13. And we're going to learn that God will help us. Very famous verse. Most all of you uh, have quoted it and might have it on a little card in your refrigerator, on your refrigerator, or, or in your car, somewhere. Uh, but Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
all things would include, it wouldn't be exclusive to, but I think you would agree, it would include bringing glory to God. Isn't that one of the all things? Uh, so we can rest in the assurance that God will not put anything in our path that he will not provide assistance for us to handle. Now think about that. If he tells us to live to his glory, and Psalms tells me that he remembers we're flesh, we're human beings, we have great intentions. Somebody listening to this right now and says, I'm changing my ways. I, I'm just going to live to God's glory. I'm just going to be more thankful. And I'm glad, I'm glad the Holy Spirit is leading you down that path. But would you agree with Pastor Jim tonight uh, that no matter how many times we do that, we'll go to work and something bad will come or we'll read an article and we'll get angry uh, and, and we'll, we'll lose that thought pattern. Well, we need help. We need a new heart. And uh, we can't change our heart on our own or we already would. And so what we do is we ask God to help us change our heart. And, and, and that's what uh, he instructs us. So I'm going to close tonight. Go to John 15. John 15. And how we do it is abide in Christ. John the 15th chapter. Reading the first five verses. Excuse me a minute. I get dried out talking to you guys. Always have good intentions to make it without getting water, but always do. And uh, John 15, 1 through 5, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purge, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I am in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Now, isn't that interesting? The closing line, without Christ, we can do nothing. And we just read that in Christ, I can do all things. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful uh, connection? Uh, Jesus said, without me, you're not getting it done. And Paul, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, said, with Christ, you can get it done. So they, they support one another. Uh, you know, to develop strength and develop a new heart, uh, he promises strength and all of life's circumstance, Christ, our unchanging friend, will give us strength. He's our friend. He's our, our Savior. He's our Lord. But he also says he's our friend. Uh, you know, that, that's amazing. I have some dear friends and they will do most things that I request of them. But can you imagine, uh, what can Jesus not do? And you're right. He can do all things. Jesus, there's nothing impossible with God, the Bible says. And so we have a friend that can do anything in any way, and he'll assist you and I. Uh, Jesus talked with clarity, didn't he? Uh, Jesus used powerful illustrations. All of us can see the great vines and the and the branches and the twigs and everything coming off. And, and uh, there's no Christian fruit unless we follow Jesus, the Bible says. Uh, look in verse 3. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. One way that we can give glory to God in our lives is to be more focused on reading, studying the word of God. Uh, it's quite remarkable uh, if you find somebody who's studious in Scripture uh, when life's struggles come and life's troubles uh, that they seem to uh, seem to be a little stronger than those that aren't uh, biblically aware. Uh, basically, I like verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. 
He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much truth. Much truth. So we, we see, uh, you know, the, the vine and the branches. Uh, years ago, uh, when Sheila and I first bought our home, we had grapevines, and we had many of them, and, and I would uh, uh, prune those grapes back, and sometimes they, they would just look like nothing but just a twig or two, and you'd be like, oh my goodness. But what happened? If you just let them run, they weren't very productive. But if you pruned them back, pruned them back, and trimmed them, uh, they would produce grapes, and a very good grape they produced. Uh, but you had to trim it back. And that's what, what the Bible is telling us. Jesus Jesus says, live to his glory. You know, there's somebody saying, boy, I would, but this event comes up or, or this struggle or that struggle. Well, uh, I understand what you're saying. I, I uh, You know, I'm a human, uh, a man just like uh, any other man. And so I understand that life struggles really trip us up. Uh, going through a couple uh, pretty tough struggles right now. Uh, but at the same degree, we know that God isn't cruel to us. He isn't uh, casting us aside. He's telling us to abide, uh, to, to walk with him and to be encouraged by him. He has something in mind for our lives. And, uh, you know, that, that's what we're taught. Uh, we're taught in Scripture. We're taught very plainly. So I want to review these one real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says that whatever we do, whether it's eating, drinking, relaxing, working, spending time uh, serving the church, whatever we do, uh, we live it to God's glory. And so a lot of people uh, will ask me from time to time, you know, what do you, uh, I think I'm going to do this, what do you think about that? And, uh, you know, there'll be some gray area and they're not quite sure whether they should do it or not. And, and my standard answer, and it's one I have to go through my, uh, myself, Pastor Jim has to go through, is what I am going to do, would it bring glory to God? Uh, you know, that's the question that has to be answered, didn't it? Will it bring glory to God? And so, so we see that. And so the second thing is God will help us. Remember uh, John 15, uh, verse 5, for without me, you can do nothing. Uh, but Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Uh, we see that connection. Without Christ, nothing. With Christ, everything. And so uh, that's what we're going to see here. Abide in Christ. And that's how we'll bring God glory. Well, I hope, hope you found that helpful. Uh, I'll pray for you, you pray for me, that we can have new hearts, hearts that are intent on bringing glory to God. Uh, and and uh, it, it would change. It would change our communities. It would change our counties, states. If, as I spoke, every Christian, I'm not talking about lost people, but if every Christian in America would respond, I mean respond positively to living a life to bring in God glory, we'd change our whole culture, wouldn't we? Uh, I, I think you would have to agree with me that we would. Well, we love you. We thank you so much for listening. And one way that you can bring God's glory is to repent of your sins and ask Him to be Lord of your life. And I wonder if you'll do that tonight. Uh, I, you, it don't have to be a prayer, Pastor Jim. Maybe when you turn this off, you can go into your living room or wherever you're at and just bow your head and say, Father, uh, I know I'm a sinner. I do want to live a life that brings you glory and I ask you to save me and give me a redeemed heart, the one that can be used by you. And every Christian out there, maybe maybe this um, lesson uh, pricks your heart like it had Pastor Jim and you just ask God to give you a new heart and to help you go forward. Well, once again, we love you. Tune in next Wednesday. Uh, don't forget Sunday morning broadcast. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you so much uh, for Jesus and what he means to us. We ask you to be with each man, woman, and child. Listen to this tonight to be blessed by your, their time they've spent together. And we ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name.
Amen.